joining me today on NYSE Floor Talk is Angel Viña. He is the founder and CEO at Denoto Technologies. Angel, it is wonderful to have you here. Thanks for joining me on Floor Talk. Thanks for having me, Judy. Very pleased to be with you. So let's start off by talking about the company. Tell me about Denoto, and can you share what business challenge prompted the creation of the company? Well, uh, Denoto was created at the end of the 90s. At that time, I was in academia doing research, research around uh, real-time data systems, how to take the data from the source to the destination, to, the, the, to try to automate the usage of the data in real time in different uh, uh, cases, different verticals, different scenarios. And uh, that was the time where the web was changing the data ecosystems. Data became you know, hyper-distributed uh, with sources of data everywhere. And it was a big challenge to really integrate and manage the data for business use. Now you have a tagline, fearless data. Where does it come from and what does it mean as a concept? Well, there's a lot of fears around data. Um, um, fears on the business side, is my data complete? Am I using the data that my competitors are using? Am I using data with the right level of quality? Am I using the data at the speed of the business in order to become a leader, a competitive company? This is very much not what we try to address, eliminate those fears that happened you know, on the IT side, on the technology side, making data accessible, making data easy to use, making data fast to use, especially when using distributed data sources. This is what we bring to the table in the modern data companies. Anhel, give me an example of customer fearless data. Well, imagine a, a supply chain company that it is a, always thinking about supply chain optimizations, operational efficiency. We eliminate the fears of uh, dealing with data that comes from uh, third parties uh, that are uh, helping with the supply chain, uh, how to optimize inventory in data warehouses, um, in uh, uh, physical warehouses, sorry. Uh, uh, how to really uh, uh, help to visualize uh, the inventory to the people that is transporting the goods, consuming the goods. All that is about you know, using fearless data to make the data agile and flexible to meet the customer expectations. You go to financial services. We're here in uh, this floor uh, where you know, financial services are very, very, very important agents. You know, it's about you know, supporting data sets for complex risk models. You know, that they use for investments, for to analyze uh, investment portfolios. It's about hyper-personalization of investment portfolios to reach the right audiences. Data is being democratized these days, and this democratization requires good governance, compliance, security. This is about fearless data. It's the time of fearless data in the market. Now, you just returned from a tour of Asia, the Middle East, and Europe. Um, what do your customers in all of these regions have in common and what's different between them? Well, data is uh, totally independent of geographies. You know, I was, I'll give you an example. I was in China visiting two verticals, companies in two verticals, uh, semiconductor companies and auto, auto manufacturers. Um, take the second, the second vertical. Uh, one driverless uh, uh, car, um, generates per hour 20 gigabytes of data. The infrastructure is there to collect, to ingest the data, to store the data, even to compute the data. The problem is how to use that data. Is data reaches petabytes very easily. At the end, you know, if every single car, every hour, is generated such a huge volume of data, the main challenge that companies have is how to use that data to fulfill some business use, to increase the uh, satisfaction of the customer experiencing, experiencing the car. You go to the semiconductor companies, you know, uh, production of semi semiconductors is very critical, very, uh, super critical at the point you know, that you know, optimization with data can increase productivity 10, 15% easily. And this is big numbers. Uh, you go to um, uh, the, uh, uh, I was telling you about just two specific verticals, you know, where we are uh, making a lot of progress, you know, in China. I was talking in the Middle East and I talked, you know, to telcos and to energy companies there, oil and gas, renewables, uh, which are very important. 
every single turbine of an eolic system generates 10,000 data points per minute. This is a huge volume of data. At the end, it's about how to use that data. And the Nodo, with uh, our uh, the Nodo platform in the market, is helping to bring agility and flexibility to the use of the data. Once that the data has been ingested, once that you have the infrastructure to compute the data, the key challenge for all these companies, for all these countries, is how to improve data usage, how to address the problem of data usage, health, another vertical which is very important and we address in Saudi Arabia. Health amounts for about one third of the total data that is being created worldwide. Only 3% of that data is being used. Why? Because the technologies are very rigid to really enable data use, the use of the data to, com to fulfill a business function. That's what the Nodal does, and this is what we were addressing you know, in these uh, countries you know, with the uh, top agents in the market. And who are some of the partners that you work with most closely with, and what are the solutions that you jointly provide? Well, we have different type of partners. Uh, there's one which is a uh, category, which is very important to us, which is the business consulting firms, the Capgeminis, Accentures, Ersten Jones, Deloitte's, and many others. Right? Um, we don't provide business consultancy to our customers, to the market. Either the customer has business consultants in their payroll or they hire you know, from these firms. Very important the work we do with these firms worldwide. You know? We need them, we need their uh, advisory services in order to really set up the data strategy for our customers. We help with our technology to make it possible. We enable the solutions for the customers. Very important as well, you know, the partnerships with um, cloud service providers. Um, uh, I mean, the, the, main, the main three, uh, the big three, uh, Google Cloud, you know, AWS, Azure, very important to us. It's becoming also very important, the partners in Asia, especially in China, Alibaba, Tencent, you know, uh, Huawei, which we are also enabling solutions for data management with them, integrating our data management layer, which is the business data layer um, uh, side of the, of the solution with the infrastructure that they have for ingesting data and for computing data. So it's a category which is also very important to us. Of course, all the needs vendors around data solutions, which usually are regional, that may be the leaders in that particular region, are partners that we work very closely with. And also there's a, a, a special ISVs that uh, provides some verticalized data experience like Salesforce or SAP that we complement with our solutions. Because at the end, what we, what we do is we integrate their, the data stack with other data sources that may be in cloud or on-prem in order to create a common semantic network, a common semantic uh, layer, common semantic model that uh, can fulfill or can and provide the data you know, to different business applications in every organization. Now, the theme of the moment for almost every company is Gen AI. How is Denodo enabling Gen AI? Well, this is a very important area for us uh, these days. Gen AI is being discussed everywhere. I mean, the uh, uh, you know, application roadmap you know, in all companies is being redefined based on these new AI capabilities. AI, um, and especially Gen AI, brings these automa automated behaviors that uh, are supported with natural language processing in order to recreate human intelligence around a specific uh, topic. The problem with that is it's very generic. It's, it's missing the context of the corporate data, the data that resides in corporate data systems. We breach the that intelligence that these uh, language models, especially these large language models, bring to the table with the data that contextualizes the behavior of the LLM. What do we do is augment the intelligence is with a technology that is called RAC, I mean, the, the, the approach which is called RAC, Retrieval Augmented Generation. We augment the behavior of the LLMs, bringing to the interaction with uh, the user, the customer, with a, through a business application, bringing the corporate data into the app context. Imagine as an example, for instance, a bank that has a chatbot you know, around customer service about you know, 
uh, or, or providing some information to executives about uh, how many loans had been uh, issued you know, in the last month. Okay? Well, the LLM has a problem at some point, requires the data in the corporate data systems. We, in the Nodo, we vectorize the metadata in the corporate data ecosystems to bring that context to the intelligent behavior that the LLM generates. We can provide that data, the number of loans that have been issued in the last month. We can even do benchmarking against public data sources because we can generate, orchestrating the LLM with the Nodo, we can generate specific behaviors that bring into the LLM, the LLM responses the corporate data that resides in the corporate data systems. That's a, a very essential piece of the, uh, to enable Gen AI applications for business use in the future that we think it will make a difference around Gen AI. Well, Angel, it's been wonderful to talk with you. Thanks for joining me on Floor Talk today. Thank you. Thank you for having me here.